Welcome, everybody. This is Gone TV's Classic Season 4 on the microphone, BC Dagger, as I take you into the finals of this great tournament here. It is Gone TV's Classic, and we already have the players up on the screen. And on the left side, you will have Haya. And on the right side, you will have C. You can see their self portraits throughout the game. Keep a close eye on them. As they enter the map, Tau Cross, a three player map. A great map, might I add, to start on. This is going to be a very exciting series here. Everybody knows they love TVT. There is the opportunity to watch 50 minute games, but sometimes you will get some short ones here too. And we could take into consideration that because it's TVT, it is a chess style matchup. It will show who is the better player based on micro, based on how quickly they can come up with strategies. And that is a shout out to the Fishy King himself, Haya, who spawned over at that left position here. And now we are getting a shot at C's base at the top one o'clock position. Again, this is the map Tau Cross if you missed it. It's a little bit of a grassy, snowy type map. And look at that nod of intensity right there from C. Both these players had an outstanding 2013 series this season of StarCraft, but unfortunately that year is over. We're in 2014 and both players did not make it to the final four of that Sonic Star League. And unfortunately they're both not tearing it up in Pro League as you would expect them to. Haya is actually doing pretty well for his team. Kind of stepping up in that position where Killer has kind of fallen out as the ace player and let Haya take over. But see he has a very good team of NBC game and it looks like that's a radio in the background or something here I cannot quite understand but if you shake it a little bit more it might be even easier for us to see <laughs> both these players just putting supply depots up and getting underway the strategies really won't show quite yet but I expect players to try and get their command centers at the natural the barracks is coming out so if we don't see a barracks anytime soon from Hyatt we could see an early command center here a 14 cc in fact the refinery coming up from C though, so it looks like he will not be expanding, and he might have a cold, it looks like he was coughing a little bit more up at the top right. If you watch his player cam, like I said, you can learn a lot from them. And so the command starter is going to be coming for high. it is that 14cc, meanwhile the refinery should be coming down, well not the refinery, the factory, the refinery is already finished, the factory should be coming down for C. So both these players are outstanding, but... They sit with a 2-3 and three record between each other, and Haya is behind in the win count. So if he wins out today, and it goes to an ace match, which I really want to see an ace match, we actually have seen blowouts in every series that these players played. No game or no series has gone to that final matchup here. So we want to see the final map, and hopefully we can get that today. But regardless, I'm sure we will be seeing some excellent StarCraft. These guys practice so much. See, he usually spends most of the time talking on his stream, but if you guys go to Snipealot's Twitch channel, you can watch these professional players at any time of the day. They're always there, constantly streaming, constantly practicing, and it's really quite cool to see them outside of this professional booth atmosphere here. And a couple of the contributors to the StarCraft scene here. Really nice to see some support in the stands. So we've seen between the shout outs to, to audience members, young kids, fangirls, the older crowd. So it's really cool to see that there's such a diverse field of fans coming to watch the StarCraft matches. Unfortunately, you guys can't see the stands because you're not there and we don't get quite enough time to see how filled up they are but there has been a pretty good turnout in every series but gom gom xp basically went all out they made their studios look good there's tons of uh great effects lights smoke and whoever wins here i hope gets hoisted onto the fans shoulders and just thrown up in the air in jubilee so good job of preventing that scouting scv by c he really wants to make sure his vultures are in control of the map, and that's the advantage of getting those factories early. And Haya, he's got to make sure he maintains control at his natural base. There is no high ground inside the main, so you really have to hold your defense at the natural. That's all you can do. And the floating barracks is going to be a good scouting opportunity for C while he tries to move in with his units. It allows him also to range outrange his opponent of Haya with siege tanks. 
because basically you get that vision that you otherwise couldn't have without a floating building. And double starport coming from Haya. Okay, so I feel like Haya kind of knows what C is doing here. He went in for that scout, maybe recognized that there wasn't a, a base inside the natural. And with C's really aggressive attack here, coming off this one base, basically a double starport is the one thing that you could really go for here to completely counterattack your opponent and catch them off guard. There's not going to be Goliaths. I think C might be in a lot of trouble here. Earlier I was thinking that C had this great unit composition of tanks, marines, there is an armory finished, so this is really lucky. But even with that armory, it could be for Goliath, maybe he figured out what's going on. But honestly, the deal here is that plus one upgrade isn't going to be quick enough for, for C to gain benefit from hit. That barracks though, it is floating in, is it going to see everything on the map? Pushing forward, there are a few Marines, but Wraiths, once they come out from that double starport, especially cloaked, it's going to be really difficult for C to deal with. It's almost worth building that combat station and getting the scout in here. He needs to push them away. C, he's going to realize what's going on here. He does see the double starport, the add-on, which means that cloak is going to be under research here. And I expect Goliath coming out very soon, unless he decides to go for that engineering bay and build turrets defensively inside his nat main base. Still having no natural. And landing the barracks here. <laughs> no huge point, but a nice pressure here by C. High is going to have to pull all his SCVs out. And the tricky part here is, if he tried to repair that bunker, he might have lost all his SCVs from a tank shot. That splash damage is so threatening here. And going with a huge defense on these tanks... The Master Repair for the SCV is keeping them live a little bit longer here, and now Wraiths are out. It could really be coming down to how well C can deal with Cloak. And in fact, that Barracks is still alive, so he might be able to build Marines out and do harassment inside of his main base at the same time. There's a lot going through C's mind at this time, but all he wants to do is continue to send units over to this natural base. And some really good micro here to pick off, almost pick off that one tank, but he could have pulled back that Wraith. C is going to have to move that tank over into another position here because he's really left out too exposed. Goliaths are funneling in and there are going to be no marines produced from that barracks. The Wraiths are going to have to get aggressive here. Cloak, it could not be any longer away. Cloak is going to be really important because the siege tanks are dying pretty quickly. C, he did start building his additional command center here, but getting pushed back like this and the huge advantage that Haya has... Once these wraiths come out, C could be in a lot of trouble. There is no concept station. He has no detection here. The academy is going up really late. And you would think that... <laughs> oh my god, C's really disappointed. You would think that he would have built that academy a little bit earlier. But now he's losing all his siege tanks. All Hai has to do is push with his factory units that he already has built. And come out here. The concept stations are coming really late now. And Goliath could start being picked off. Oh my god. Okay, so one of the cloak units... It became uncloaked. Two of them down now. There are two or three wraiths still cloaked. And now Siege Chink's on the high ground. This is the deathly portion of the map. Is that you can range with that dropship. You can use Siege Chink's to harass the natural base. And this is this is way more curse words than I've ever tried to translate in Korean. And ha Haya wins here. And C kind of laughs at his way out as he taps GG. A really unfortunate game for C. He looked like he had a good plan here, but Haya, he is the fish king, and he was able to prevail here. I will see you guys in game.